A new potentially cheaper Model Y variant was just approved and EPA documents reveal some exciting details about this variant that I want to explore in this video. I'm going to discuss battery size, range, battery pack energy density, plus I'm going to talk about why I believe Tesla is introducing this new variant of the Model Y. I'm John and welcome to Cleaner Y. A new standard range all-wheel drive version of the Model Y was just added to fueleconomy.gov. And as you can see, this new variant has an EPA rated range of 279 miles as compared to the 330 mile EPA rating of the long range all-wheel drive version. However, I did wanna make sure and note that just because a vehicle gets added to the EPA's list or gets added to fueleconomy.gov, this does not mean that this vehicle will certainly be for sale in the United States. For instance, as you can see here, there is a Model Y rear wheel drive variant that has a range of around 244 miles. And this version is not currently available and Tesla only offered a rear wheel drive standard range version for a very, very short period of time. However, while I'm somewhat doubtful that Tesla will sell a rear wheel drive Model Y here in 2022, I do believe that this new all wheel drive standard range version will be sold by Tesla this year. I'll talk more about that in a minute, but before we do that, let's dive into the details revealed by the EPA's documents, the documents that Tesla had to file to get this version approved. In a document that was dated February 22nd of this year, Tesla submitted an application for the addition of a new Model Y all-wheel drive variant. It's of course assumed that since this new version has less range that it's going to have a smaller battery pack, which we'll talk about some of those details in just a minute, some of the details that these EPA documents talk about and reveal. However, it is important that we talk about why would Tesla bring out a cheaper version right now when they don't have any demand issues and they're selling everything that they can build? Well, first of all, I believe it does fit with Tesla's mission to make the Model Y more accessible and more affordable. Secondly, a smaller battery size allows for more Model Ys to be produced if battery supply is constrained. Thirdly, because of the rising prices of raw materials right now, which we'll talk about more near the end of the video, this version may be what Tesla is going to bring out to be able to keep the price of the Model Y at a more reasonable level. If you haven't noticed lately, Tesla's vehicles have gone up significantly in price over the last year and a half to two years. When you compare the base cost of the Tesla Model Y to some of the other competitors on the market right now, the Ionic 5, the EV6, the ID4, and also the Mustang Mach-E, you can see that with these price increases, the entry-level Model Y long-range all-wheel drive version is quite a bit more expensive than some of the competition. Now, I have talked about this in the past, but I believe Tesla's Model Y is worth the price premium over these other SUVs, but nonetheless, if somebody is not able to afford these higher prices, then they're not able to get into a Tesla Model Y. And I believe Tesla is going to remedy that with a standard range all wheel drive version that we've been talking about. Now, one of the first interesting facts that I wanna talk about that these EPA documents reveal is the gravimetric energy density of the battery pack of the new standard range all wheel drive variant, because that will give us a clue into the battery chemistry. In this chart, I filled out the energy density measurements from previous EPA documents that I've looked at. And as you can see, the performance all-wheel drive and the long-range all-wheel drive variants of the Model Y have a gravimetric energy density at the pack level of around 180 watt-hours per kilogram per EPA documents. Also, the 2022 Model Y standard range rear wheel drive version, which of course has not been on sale this year, according to EPA documents, has an energy density of around 160 watt hours per kilogram. When it comes to the potential battery cells that would be found in a rear wheel drive version if Tesla did bring it out, I believe it would be prismatic LFP or lithium iron phosphate battery cells from CATL. Now, when it comes to the pack level energy density of this new standard range all wheel drive variant, this EPA document only lists the same 180 watt hours per kilogram energy density number that we've seen before as a placeholder for the entire all wheel drive platform. And I don't believe this number represents the actual energy density of this new standard range all wheel drive variants battery pack. I do believe that this version, this standard range all wheel drive version of the Model Y will actually be equipped with lithium iron phosphate battery cells and I'll explain why. But before we do that, I wanna talk about the battery size or the battery capacity size of this new Model Y variant with 279 miles of range. 
Unfortunately, these EPA documents don't give us a very clear cut battery size. However, we can use the recharge event energy number that they give here of 76.533 kilowatt hours and get a really close estimate of the battery size of this variant. It's important to note that when this EPA document talks about 76 kilowatt hours in this recharge event, that's not actually the measurement of the battery pack size because you have to factor in charging losses. This Inside EVs article written by Tom Milani gives a good explanation of charging losses in, for instance, a Tesla Model 3. And as is mentioned in this article, all electric vehicles experience losses during the charging process. To measure the charging losses of a 2021 Tesla Model 3, Tom connected his Model 3 to an Electrify America DC fast charger. And as you can see quoted here, in the end, the Electrify America charging station showed 39 kilowatt hours dispensed and the Model Y's display screen showed 35 kilowatt hours received for a difference of four kilowatt hours. Tom explains in this article that there are several factors that can influence how much of a percentage of energy is lost during the charging process between what you actually send from the charger to what actually gets put into the battery pack. And he mentions that the biggest energy thief is usually the thermal management system, which is working hard to cool or heat the battery during DC fast charging for maximum charging performance. In the end, Tom estimates that this Model 3 in his example had around a 10% charging loss, which is the difference between what the charger sends and what's actually received into the battery pack. So with this in mind, I have compiled the EPA charging data for not only the new standard range all wheel drive variant, but also the other Model Y variants. And in this chart, you can see the recharge event numbers in kilowatt hours that the EPA has provided and then another column with the estimated battery sizes of each variant. When it comes to the estimated battery pack size for the first two Model Y variants, the long range, all wheel drive and performance versions, I used these as a baseline measurement since we already know they have a roughly 82 kilowatt hour battery pack. And when you combine the known battery pack size with the EPA's charging data for these two models, it indicates roughly an 11% charging loss. So if you subtract 11% from the EPA's charging data, for the standard range all wheel drive version, you are left with an estimated 69 kilowatt hour battery pack for this new variant. Now, earlier on in the video, I mentioned my theory that this new standard range all wheel drive version will be equipped with a lithium iron phosphate battery. One of the reasons why I believe this comes down to the actual vehicle weight or the curb weight of this new variant. Once again, according to previous EPA documents, they list the performance all-wheel drive variant of the Model Y weight at 4,416 pounds, the long range all-wheel drive variant at 4,381 pounds, and the standard range rear-wheel drive version, which we haven't seen here in 2022 at 3,920 pounds. And this document lists the curb weight of this new standard range all-wheel drive variant at 4,356 pounds. However, on Tesla's website, they recently adjusted the weight of the Model Y, and Tesla now lists the weight of the performance version to be 4,398 pounds, and the long range all wheel drive version to be 4,363 pounds. So this means that the standard range all wheel drive version of the Model Y that has 279 miles of range is only around seven pounds lighter than the long range all wheel drive Model Y that gets 330 miles of range, but this doesn't make sense if the battery pack energy density is equal between these vehicles. Why is the weight of these two variants so close despite having an estimated 13 kilowatt hour battery capacity difference? Well, the answer seems to be that this new version of the Model Y is equipped with a less energy dense battery cell chemistry like lithium iron phosphate and likely the actual energy density of this new standard range all wheel drive Model Y battery pack is closer to the 152.5 watt hours per kilogram range, which would give us a battery pack weight difference of around seven pounds. And this could explain the curb weight being so close despite having a smaller battery pack. This kind of energy density number would be more in line with a lithium iron phosphate battery pack. This especially makes sense and would give Tesla some insurance against the rising prices of nickel. I went over to the Markets Insider website, and as you can see right now, there has been a huge spike in the price of nickel on the market. And when you compare the price of iron ore right now to the price of nickel, there's actually a huge difference in the price of these two materials. I don't know about you, but I would love to see a cheaper all-wheel drive version of the Model Y with lithium iron phosphate 
battery sales. And I believe this would be especially smart right now for Tesla with the rising prices of nickel. This new Model Y version could allow Tesla to hedge their bets and make sure they can keep the cost of the Model Y reasonable even if nickel prices soar. Do let me know what you think in the comments section below. What do you think the price of this new standard range all-wheel drive variant of the Model Y could be? And do you agree with my assumptions? I do wanna once again remind you that the 2022 Electric SUV Buyer's Guide is available at cleanerwatt.com and I regularly update this buyer's guide to make sure that it's up to date. For instance, I recently added the new price changes for the Model Y that Tesla made. It includes information on 29 electric SUVs that are either available right now or will be available in the near future. It has helpful articles and also a series of charts comparing different specs on the vehicles. If you wanna find out more and purchase a copy of this digital magazine, you can go over to cleanerwatt.com or click on the link in the video description. Well, thank you so much for watching this video all the way through to the end. I'd like to take a moment to thank the Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make this content possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and also the other supporters listed on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up and how you can support my work, I'll put a link to that in the video description below. Thank you so much.